Hi everyone, so yeah, we're gonna be spending some time today talking about the Jabber Guest for Android SDK and going through a tutorial of how you can enable an app to do that, so. Uh, we'll spend some time talking about what we will and won't be able to cover in this hour and some of the requirements to be able to do this at home when you, when you get interested about it and you wanna learn more. Uh, spend a couple of minutes giving a high level overview of the SDK before we show up. A, I wrote up a fictitious bank app that we're going to enable for guests for Android and then I'll spend hopefully the majority of the time talking about four different app development options that you can do with the SDK as far as the level of uh, customizability that you want to introduce into the app and then we'll summarize and go over some resources and next steps. So what we will cover is at least at a high level an overview of the, the SDK and give you sort of a hierarchy of where all of the classes exists. But unfortunately, I, as I say at the bottom, we will not have enough time to cover every single Jabber Guest for Android SDK component. As much as I would love, there's still only 60 minutes in an hour. And believe me, I've tried to put more. It just doesn't work. Uh, but we do have a lot of SDK documentation and sample programs that you can get with, with the SDK that will hopefully fill in some of the blanks that I'm not gonna be able to cover here today. Um, I will be providing later the sample code as a download that you can all use later on and, and refer back to as, as well. I'm still working on getting that uploaded and, and available. Um, because we're not gonna have enough time to go over all of the code. So I'll, I'll do my best to at least show you the breadcrumbs of where the code is that you, know, that, that you can go for there. Um, I'm not gonna be able to cover all of like Windows or Mac or Linux, how do I install Android Studio and the Android and the JDK and all, all of that stuff. Um, and maybe most importantly, I'm not gonna be able to go too far into intro level Android development. I'm gonna be throwing around a lot of words like activities, fragments, broadcast receivers, intents. I hope you know what those are. If you don't, this, this may be a little bumpy, but hopefully not, not too bad. So I am assuming at least a little Android development. So requirements at a high level, uh, you need JDK because Android is Java based and IDE, which I recommend right now to be Android Studio. Uh, our Jabber Guest for Android SDK, we recently released version 10.5. 10.6 is coming in the very near future, and I mean weeks, so look forward to that pretty soon. Um, and either you have to have an existing Android app or you build one and you add Jabber Guest into it. So I'm a developer, so of course I've got to hit you with a diagram. <laughs> that shows a bunch of classes. So here's, here's my version of the diagram. And in a nutshell, these are the, the major classes of the, the Jabber Guest for Android SDK. So what I've got is I've got two sections in here. There's this, this gray section at the bottom, which I kind of think of as the, the shared classes that are used by all of the other components in the SDK. There's one in particular, Jabber Guest Call, that we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about because it's sort of the main engine that, that drives everything. Uh, We'll also be briefly touching on the render callbacks and log classes. Uh, if I had more time, we would talk about call service and audio route manager, but those were a couple of classes that got left on the, the cutting room floor. And then above the, the gray box, I have what I'm thinking of as the, the presentation level pieces. So activities, views, and fragments that, that our SDK provides that you can use within your own app. So, at the lowest level in orange, you've got a collection of views. So for instance, a preview view will show you local video before a call is started. Self view and remote view show local and remote video when a call is already in progress. Uh, call bar view is like a little call control where you see audio and video muting, the ability to hang up a call, and a keypad button that will launch a keypad view where users can submit DTMF tones. Um, those views are contained within individual fragments. So for instance, the preview fragment contains the preview view, and the call fragment contains the remote view, self view, call bar view, and keypad view. And then on top of all of that, we also have an activity class that wraps the whole thing. So if you use the activity, you get the two fragments and in turn get the views. If you skip the activity and you use the fragments, you can still get the views. So when I say four approaches, what I'm trying to say is that I can, as an app developer, choose to invoke Jabber Guest Call Activity directly and get all the functionality for free. 
I could instead invoke the, the two fragments and get a little more control about when stuff is presented to the user. Or I can even go so far as to say, I'm just going to use the SDK view components in my own activities or fragments, and maybe I have to do a little more coding to manage how that stuff is, is going to be displayed. Or maybe I skip the presentation layer entirely. I use my own views. I use my own controls and everything. And I just, I just am calling straight into classes like Jabber Guest Call. And I'm, I'm going to do all of the call functionality that way using all of my own controls. So before we get too much into code, I want to talk about this Jabber Guest Call class because we're going to see it a lot, especially with some of our lower level options. Um, you could think of this as the messenger between your app and this Jabber Guest server. So we don't want you to be a SIP expert to know how to ne negotiate the protocols with all the endpoints or whatever. We want you to be able to say in your code, Jabber Guest Call, go start a call. Go mute audio. And this class is going to say, OK, I know how to do that, and go talk behind the scenes to the Jabber Guest server to negotiate all of the, the media and, and do all of that stuff. So you don't have to worry about any of those details. This is the class that's going to take care of that for you in the code. Um, in addition, it also collects interesting events from the Jabber Guest server that may be originating from the, the receiving call side that you could display to your, your client. So uh, we're going to talk in more detail about what those four notification event types are uh, a little later on. Um, and then the last bullet point here is that at a high level, think of having one instance of Jabber Guest Call for each call lifecycle. So when I want to start a call, I'll create a new instance of Jabber Guest Call. I'll go through the call lifecycle, connecting, connected. User hangs up. We tear down the resources, disconnecting, disconnected. And then we're done with that instance of Jabber Guest Call. If I want to start a new instance of a call, I create a new instance of this Jabber Guest Call class. So let's. Do a demo. Make sure this is all. I'm going to apologize for a minute because the, the screencasting app that I wanted to use doesn't seem to work here in the, the Wi-Fi environment. So this one, it, it works, but it's got a bit of a screen lag. So it refreshes about once every two seconds. We'll, we'll see how well it works with, with live video. <laughs> <laughs> but so for instance, here's this fictitious bank that we just created, South Beach Bank. Looks simple. Well, so I keep my screen on. Sign in, and Mr. Smith has savings account, checking account, credit card. That's all fine. And got some transactions and deposits. All pretty normal. What they want to do is they have this call button up here in the upper left or the upper right, excuse me. And then back here, they've got another call button over here. They want the user to be able to hit this call button and be able to call one of their account representatives to get more information about their accounts. And when they hit that button, have live two-way video. So this is what we're going to be spending the rest of the hour trying to do. How do we figure out how to put the Jabber Guest functionality to make that, that call button actually do a video call? So let's go with the first approach where I consume from the SDK Jabber Guest Call activity. Now, what I told you ahead of time was that this approach was the simplest, meaning that I don't have to do a lot of coding. I'll, I'll let you decide whether or not you think that, that that is successful. So first, I'm going to go into presentation mode to make this. Okay. Hopefully, that's readable to everybody in the back. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, the application manifest here. Um, and regardless of what approach, there are a number of features and permissions that I'm going to have to enable for the guest app to function correctly. I don't have enough time to, to go into detail about why we uh, require all of these things. But um, let me just add this comment here. Hopefully, they're not too ridiculous. So for instance, we need the camera because I need to do video stuff. Bluetooth for Bluetooth audio, networking, recording audio, et cetera. Um, 
And then down here at, at the bottom, besides the, the three activities that I showed you, I've got commented out code for the, the four different options of, of code that we're going to go over. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and activate the option one part. And you'll notice that the syntax for this activity name looks a little different than the, the three activities prior, because I'm not actually including an act, a new activity Java class in the code. I'm referring to explicitly the Jabber guest call activity from the guest SDK. So I've added that activity there. And now let's go to, in this case, this is the screen. I can bring it up here really quickly. We're going to just enable the call button on this screen for now to do that, that type of call. So so this is the activity for that. I'm going to add an import statement. And then at the bottom, I'm going to go to my on-click handler for the call button, where I've got the four options that launch the, the various intents. So what am I doing here? So they click the button. I'm going to create a new intent to launch that jabberguestcallactivity.class. And eventually, that intent is going to be started to, to launch the, the call screen. Before I do that, though, I'm going to pass in a couple of intent extras. These are just arguments that are valid for the call. For instance, I need to tell Jabberguest call activity what is the destination endpoint that I'm trying to dial, what is the Jabberguest server name that I'm trying to dial, and then I've also included a couple of other optional ones that I think are of value. For instance, in the app, in the, ac the action bar, I want to have a display name to, to show. And in this case, I want to show a preview before the user actually starts a call, so where I can see video and I can click a call button before that call is actually initiated. So six lines of code plus an import statement and an activity. Not too bad. But does it work? Let's go ahead and run it. And I don't know if you guys attended uh, Rowan's talk yesterday, but let's go ahead and pray to the demo gods and <laughs> make sure that everything works all right. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> it's true. So it's uploading the APK now. Oh, there it was. Okay, so my user is going to log in. And for full disclosure, I'm stealing the address, the, the address and the URI from the username and password fields in this case. So let's click call. Oh, an invalid certificate dialog. We'll, we'll talk about that. OK. And the uh, MPEG LA video license. OK, I'll go ahead and activate that. We'll, we'll talk about both of those in a, in a couple minutes. Look, I'm on a call. See, now you guys are too. Click the call button. So. I doubt you guys can probably see from that far away, but it is actually refreshing a little better than the, the share over there. But So I'm actually on a video call where I've got my little selfie window that I can move around. I can switch. Got my call bar view at the bottom. Going to go ahead and just end the call. Six lines of code, and I've got a video call right into my app. Clicker go. So that's the simplest way to add. Yes. Just, it's an endpoint that can connect anywhere that has a 
So the question is, with a normal Jabber client, I'm, I'm registered and I'm consuming licenses to connect to a, a server, but does any of that stuff apply here for guest? Um, in general, I, I would say the answer is, is no. I mean, so to, to get the SDK, you have to agree to uh, certain things to use it, but the end user, it doesn't have to register or do anything. There is, there is an MPEG LA license. You saw that little dialogue that I had to click. We'll, we'll talk about what that is and, and why it's there. In, in a couple of slides, but as far as registering with a server and licenses, I mean that that MPEG LA one is it. You know, just to just this is really meant for just Joe user out there, like he said in the wild on the internet. So, Jabber guest call activity simplest solution. We added the manifest entry and import statement, and we created an intent to launch. I just showed you a slide not too long ago with like 15, 16 classes, but we didn't touch any of those. We only touched the Jabber Guest Call activity because Jabber Guest Call activity wraps all of that functionality for you. Cool. Dot, dot, dot. Unless you want to use your own views, unless you want to have your own control about how all of that stuff looks in your activity, right? You, if you go with this approach, you have to want to like our layouts for those components. So the way Jabberguest call activity works is it contains the two fragments, the preview fragment and the call fragment. And when it's before a call, it shows the preview fragment on the screen. When it goes to a calling, it takes the preview fragment away and it shows the call fragment. If you wanted to, you could do that yourself. You could write an activity that does fragment transactions that decides which fragment is currently showing in a container on your screen. Or maybe you want to have a custom layout for a large screen like a tablet where South Beach Bank shows on, on the right their, their, their activity, the, the banking statement, and then on the left is where the call takes place. So you could do this option too. Op this is one of the options that I'm not going to be able to show in code here uh, due, to, due to time. but. Um, you have to decide when to show each fragment uh, based on a number of uh, conditions. So in my sample, I use uh, what are known as call state changes from the Jabber Guest Call instance, and we'll talk about that in, in option three. Uh, fragments is nice, too, because maybe you don't want to show the preview first. You just want to go straight into calling. Don't show the preview fragment. Just only show the call fragment, and you're off. Uh, you still, you're gonna have to trust me because I don't have the code to show you, but you still don't really have to know too much of the specifics of handling the call. You get the greater layout flexibility with the fragments as far as which, which is showing when and where on the screen, but you still don't have control of what's shown in the fragments themselves because you're still relying on the fragment containing its own set of views and how those are all laid out. So let's go to a more challenging or no, more, more involved option where I'm not going to use the SDK fragments or activities. I am going to use some of the SDK views though to, to try to make life at least a little simpler. Just uh, uninstalling the old version of the app. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to undo option one. And I'm going to instead, when the user clicks that call button, now I'm going to launch a new intent, which is going to call this new fragment, call with default views activity dot class. Now, because I'm not using fragments or activities, I'm using views, I have to write my own activity. Right, which means I've got to write my own layout for how those views are going to be arranged. I also have to go into the manifest here. Let's take this guy away. And instead go down to this option three part. So launch my own activity. And before I show you what that code is, because it's going to be more helpful, I think, in this case to do the demo first and then show the code, 
let's, let's do that instead. Because the layout is gonna look a lot different than the, the call that we saw before with option one. And I've done that specifically because I wanna show that with this approach, you can actually do the layouts and rearrange things how you want them to look. Try not to get tangled over my own cords here. Okay, so I sign in. So I got an activate license dialog. Let's go ahead and click activate. He didn't get that invalid cert handler dialog. That's interesting. We'll have to try to figure out why. Oh, demo gods. Okay. We're gonna try to connect to a different address. I got an error dialog that said I couldn't contact the server. So we're gonna try a different. We'll give this one more shot, and if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna have to go straight into code. Make sure I actually am connected. Oh, that's probably part of the problem. I got jumped onto a different Wi-Fi network. Real exciting demo, huh? <laughs> okay, maybe that will work a little better, huh? Oh. Help if I show you the display, huh? So, Except the MPEG LA, ah, look, we're already doing a lot better. So local video and remote video are now stacked on top of each other, and I've, got a, I've written my own hackish custom call bar. You'll notice the, the text, not icons. I'm a developer, not an artist. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> so I've got my local video here at the top and the, the call video at the bottom. I can actually click things like the audio mute and the video mute, and they change color as they're activating and unactivating. And I'll just end the call. So that took a little longer than I had hoped but hopefully we can get through the other material a little faster, huh? So let's bring out from hiding. This file. And 
this activity. So remember, we had a, we had a vertical linear layout there, so that, that's not too surprising where I had local video, the control bar, and then the remote video at the bottom. So you'll see here in, in, the, in the topmost container, I, I'm referring to the SDK view component by its full name from the SDK, the self view, and then the, the little text view that I had in the, the top left that just said local view on it. I've got my, my button bar for the audio, video, and hang up. And then at the bottom, another container that contains an SDK view, the, the remote view for doing the remote video specifically. Nothing too exciting there. OK, this is a little bit more code than before. All right. How about we start at the beginning? <laughs> Let's go, okay, here we go. On create. In the beginning, the activity was created. So I, I set the content view to the, to the layout that we just showed. I grab those uh, video buttons, and the video button, the audio button, and the hang up button, and I just set its on click listener to myself. So presumably, I'm going to find that on click method overridden later on. Uh, Oh, this is interesting. Initialize the Jabber Guest for Android SDK logger to log at debug level for troubleshooting. Okay, so this is how you can use, you'll see the other side. This log class is actually referring to one of those shared components that I talked about at the very beginning, the, the log class from the SDK, where I can actually say in logcat what level the the Jabber guest SDK components themselves are logging at so that if you wanted to do any troubleshooting of our code, you could do so. Um, and it just takes an Android util log level. By default, it's at warn, but I've decided to up it to debug. Okay. Initialize our invalid certificate handler. Wait a minute, I didn't see that. What's going on there? Okay, let's... Let's see what this would be. Um, does anybody have any ideas of why I might need an invalid certificate handler, by the way, with Jabber Guest? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you want it, you, yep, uh, good. Yep, yeah. So you want to make sure that the guest server is using a valid SSL certificate when we're talking to it, right? I mean, could, could be uh, a rogue agent there trying to do something. So. We want to know, so Jabber guest call in the background when it's doing communication, it's going to know when it sees a certificate that, eh, I don't know, this one doesn't look right. Maybe I shouldn't just allow you to talk to it right away. But what you can do is you can register a handler for that type of event to say, before you just terminate this call, tell me that it's an invalid certificate and let me decide what to do with it. I've got that class right here. So this is the invalid certificate handler that will handle notifications from Jabber, blah, blah, blah. That's a lot of words. Here's the, here's the uh, function that you have to override on the interface, this on invalid certificate. And it's got a lot of arguments that relate to the certificate that we did see. So you could potentially, in this case, when you get this call back from Jabber guest call, say, do I want to present a dialogue to the user to let them decide whether or not to accept it? Do I just want to reject it out of hand? Or, maybe not the safest. I just decided to accept all certificates for the purposes of this sample. Because you, you, you could do that. I, I, I don't know that I would in the wild. But um, it's actually just a one-line function call here. Just accept invalid certificate, and you pass in these two values from the the certificate, and we'll store that preference and, and know to not ask you again about that certificate as long as the, the app remains installed. Um, but yeah, so in this case, we, we saw it because the server that I am talking to does have a self-signed certificate. I did that on purpose because I wanted to be able to demonstrate the invalid certificate handler specifically. Okay, so we can do that. 
So I created the certificate handler and then a static call to that Jabber guest call object to register that I have an invalid certificate handler that I want to handle that event when that notification takes place. And I'm doing this in onCreate because I want to make sure that that's there before any call flow starts to happen. I want to make sure that that's already in place before it has the chance to come in and just reject it out of hand. Compose a URI to initiate. You remember in option one, those extra intent arguments that I had to pass to JabberGuest call activity so that it knew the address of the JabberGuest server, the URI of the destination endpoint, and display name? Little different uh, look and feel, but this is basically doing the same thing, except I'm doing it in code as far as, instead of an intent extra, where I've got this static method on JabberGuest call that will create a URI that the SDK will use to actually make that connection with the server based on the, uh, the server name, the, the address, and then the display name. And then, like I said, we have one Jabber Guest call instance per call. Then I actually create it. So I say first, is there already an instance available? If not, if it's null or I'm not in an active call, Let's go ahead and call create instance, and I pass in that URI that I built for the, for the call that I'm gonna do, and I also pass in my application context. Before I get too far ahead of myself. Eventually, Android's lifecycle for an activity is also gonna call on resume once on start finishes, and one thing that I'm doing here in on resume is I've got another static call, register receiver, with this member variable, mbroadcast receiver. We'll, we'll look at this method in a minute, but you can think of this as, remember I said Jabber guest call will send me notifications when interesting events happen that maybe I want to pay attention to? You implement a broadcast receiver to re receive those events and then handle them however you see fit. So in on resume, I'm registering a receiver. So this is where if my app goes to the background and it comes back, I want to make sure that I'm constantly registering that receiver. But when it goes to the background and on pause, I unregister because that app is no longer on the foreground. I don't have a UI to have to worry about updating when some of these events are taking place. So let's look at what this broadcast receiver is. Here we are. So broadcast receiver is an Android class, so you just override one method on receive. And it gives you an intent where the notifier, in this case, can put in extra information to, to let you know special stuff about that notification. So in this case, I'm going to look at the action value on that intent to see if it's a call state changed from Jabber Guest Call, a call control event, a call error event, or an action instance available. Action instance available is interesting because we said, I want to create a new instance of Jabber Guest Call. Jabber Guest Call says, OK, I'll go ahead and do that for you. And then when it does, it notifies everybody that registers, hey, there's a new instance here. You can go get it now. So I'm going to get that new instance notification. So let's see what this private method does. Process new instance available. Ah, we've seen that variable before a couple places, but we never saw where it was initialized. So what I'm doing in the activity is I'm storing that instance once it's been created. And once Jabber Guest Call tells me that that instance has been created, I know that it's valid, so I can go ahead and store it in, in my activity. Now that I've got a valid instance, now I can actually start calling functions against that instance instead of the, the, the static stuff. So the first thing, register our app context with Jabber Guest Call for MPEG LA license acceptance. I have to give it an activity context so that the SDK has the screen to display the dialog to accept the MPEG LA license. And I've got a slide later on where I'm going to talk about why that is and sort your, your options for maybe getting around it. I don't know that I'd do that, though. Um, you'll also notice that we didn't really have a call button for the user to, to start a call. We just went straight into the call. And that's because in my code, 
as soon as that new instance is created, I said start. I didn't say negotiate the media with the remote endpoint and go talk to, I, I just start. And Jabbergast call takes care of all the rest for you. So eventually, it starts negotiating, connecting, connected, and I've got two-way video. Great. Let's look at some of these other uh, notifications, though. For instance, call state changed. Now, you know what? Let's go to call control event first. What is a call control event? You can think of this as something about the media has been updated and I want to let you know that that has taken place. Maybe I've sent a DTMF because you told me to. Uh, well, let's, let's see what's going on in process call control event. So this is the intent that I got from my broadcast receiver that said, here's the call control event. I get a serializable extra from that intent that Jabberguest call put in. It's of type Jabberguest call dot call control event, which is an enum value. So what are the things that I'm looking for here? Event equals audio muted or audio unmuted, okay? Video muted, video unmuted. And then what am I doing when I get, say, audio muted or audio unmuted? Set the activation state of audio button based on current mute state of local audio. So I say, is local audio muted on this call instance? And based on that return value, set the activation state of my audio muted button. Let's go back to those buttons because we didn't talk about them. User clicks the audio button. First thing that I say is, is my audio muted? If so, unmute it. If it isn't muted, go ahead and mute it, right? I'm, I'm doing the inverse based on the current audio mute state. So two things, there, there's, a, there's a four step sequence here. User presses a control in the UI that translates into something that I want to tell Jabber guest call to do to the media, say audio muted, audio unmuted, okay? Jabber guest call then goes in the background and says, all right, I'm gonna take care of that for you. When it's done, Jabber guest call fires back a notification to us to let us know that that actually has successfully taken place and then we can update the UI to let them know that that event has taken place. Because the last thing that we wanna do is say mute and then change the activation state of that button. If the mute actually didn't take place, we don't wanna let the user think that it has, right? wait for the notification to come back from Jabberguest call to say that the, mute, the audio is actually muted right now and we're ready to go. So user interacts with the UI, Jabberguest call does the functionality in the background, tells you when that functionality is done via a notification as a call control event, and then you update your UI based on that notification. There are a lot more uh, call control events and we'll, we'll talk about that in another slide. Um, so I'm kind of running out of time, but call state changed. Jabberguest call maintains its own state machine for uh, a, a call lifecycle. When, when I was ending the call, for instance, you'll remember there was, there was a little toast that popped up for about five seconds that said ending call to let the user know that the call was currently ending. Now, I hung up, so obviously I know that I'm ending the call. Maybe I don't need that notification. But what if the remote end is the one that hangs up first? How am I supposed to know that that's why the video disappeared suddenly versus maybe the remote end muted their video and that's why I'm not seeing it anymore? So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to, to know when a call is ending so that I can send that toast to actually say that's why you're not seeing the video anymore. So. Similar as before, I get a serializable extra from the intent that Jabberguest call sent to us. It's a different enum this time, Jabberguest call dot state. So I've got code here and this is stuff that I've commented out. You'll have to you'll have to do some little homework later on to find out what that code is or why it's important for the connecting state. But let's look at these two down here, disconnecting. 
So I've gotten a notification that the call is in progress of being torn down. So I send the toast to indicate that the call is in the process of ending. And then eventually I get the notification that everything is torn down and we're done. So I unregister my invalid certificate handler with the Jabberguest call because we don't need to handle that anymore. The call's done. And I call finish on my activity so that I can go back to the, to the banking app. One more thing really quickly before we go. Remember when I had that connectivity problem? It was actually fortuitous now that I think about it that that, that happened. Because I saw an error dialog, right? That information came from Jabber Guest Call. Because it knew when it couldn't connect out to the server. And so it sends an error notification to you with info that you can use to build a dialog. So here's call error event, which then we'll use to call process call error event. So I get the extras from the intent, and I pull out two specific uh, values from that bundle, this user title label and user message label as strings. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those to build a new alert dialog to throw up to the screen. Now, I'm not using a custom UI here. I'm just using the, the vanilla Android UI for an alert dialog. You, you could certainly style it and do it to your own application's look and feel. Um, but you'll see here this message and title, remember, came from the intent from Jabber Guest Call. So the user has a visible indication of why that call failed. Call not completed. Make sure you're connected to the network. And an OK button that I can then use to dismiss the dialogue and exit the call activity. So a lot of code. Let's take a step back and sort of summarize all of that. And get out from behind this podium a little more. So we had a lot more code to write with this approach as opposed to, say, option one, right? Uh, I had to have my own custom activity for managing the SDK views. And I had the layout that I had to write, but I'm an Android developer. That's maybe not so bad. Register a broadcast receiver with Jabber Guest Call. That was actually pretty important because that's where we're getting a lot of the interesting notifications during the, the call about significant events. And it helps me time when specific things need to happen in my UI, for instance, when I'm activating a button, when I'm showing video, et cetera, or when I'm even starting the, the call. We had an invalid certificate handler because we, we want to be able to know when I've got an invalid SSL certificate from a guest server. And MPEG LA licensing, we still had that dialogue. There is a slide coming, I promise. We had much more control of the layout since we're directly referring to views, right? I showed you the, the layout, and it did look dramatically different than what you saw from the Jabber Guest Call Activity class because I had the, the two views on the one screen, and I had my own little call bar at, in, in the middle. Um, now, if I had a professional app, maybe I've got professional icons on all of that stuff, and I could, you know, make it look really fancy. But I do have my own layout to manage because I'm using my own custom controls at that point. Uh, and really, it's sort of a mixed approach where some of the views were from the SDK and some weren't, and that's totally fine, right? I can choose, pick and choose which views from the SDK that I want to put in and which ones are going to be my own, and potentially map. Like, for instance, the, the audio, video, and hang up bar, those mapped to function calls that I called against that Jabber Guest call class. So we talked about the new instance available notification. 
communicates to any interested components when an instance has been created. Uh, an interesting thing is that lots of the SDK components register for these notifications from Jabber Guest Call, and they will actually act on that new instance available to say, oh, hey, instance, I care about you. I'm going to register myself with you so you know who I am. Um, and then uh, this, this didn't necessarily matter for us, but timing-wise, let's say I had another component already create an instance of Jabber Guest Call, and then some life cycle time later, I actually instantiate a new component that wants to register with Jabber Guest Call. It doesn't have to create an instance because it's already been created, but when it registers with Jabber Guest Call to say, I care about interesting events, it will also proactively tell you at registration time, oh, and by the way, an instance has already been created. Here it is. You don't need to create one. It's already there. So we talked about this a little bit as far as the, the life cycle of the states that you will get from Jabber Guest Call. We start in a non-initialized state. We then talk to the Jabber Guest server, make sure the API and the server version and everything looks OK, that we've got connectivity. And we pass all of that. We go to disconnected. User says, click a call button. Or you go into the code and you say, start. Then I go into the connecting state where I start to talk to that Jabber Guest server and say, OK, let's start exchanging SDP information with that remote endpoint and make sure that we can set up all the media sessions and everything OK. That gets done, and we transition to the connected state. Now I've got a connected call. Now I'm talking back and forth and doing whatever. One side decides to end because, unfortunately, a call can't last forever. We go to the disconnecting phase, start to tear down the resources, and when it's done, I go back to disconnected. I don't go to non-initialized. The Jabber Guest call error events, I showed you in the code where I care about these two key pieces of information in the intent extras that I could use to build a dialogue. Um, I don't know if it's terribly interesting, but for debugging and diagnostic purposes, there are also three other pieces of information in that intent that you could use that correspond to like numeric debug codes. So we, we talked about these four call control events, the audio muted, audio unmuted, video muted, video unmuted, but there are a number of other events that you can get as well too. So for instance, if you have the keypad view and the user presses the digit one, we can tell you, I sent the digit one over the stream so that your app now, when it gets that notification, says, OK, play back an audio file that sounds like the DTMF1 so the user knows that that digit was played. Um, streams updated, so that could be, for instance, the, the remote video endpoint decides to renegotiate video because they've got a lower quality because of network conditions or whatever, and maybe they want to change the size of the video that they're sending. You could, you could get that notification to then say, OK, I need to reevaluate what my, my video streams are doing right now. Audio routes updated for if I'm sending audio instead of the speakerphone to my earphone or to Bluetooth, if I want to change a little menu bar to indicate what, what audio route is currently being used. And camera switched is on that self view for when I'm switching locally, if I'm transmitting from the local view or from the remote view will tell you when we've successfully switched that camera stream with the remote endpoint, and they're actually seeing the other video you told us to switch to. So the invalid certificate handlers, uh, we didn't have to care about it before because previously the SDK fragments and therefore Jabber Guest Call Activity also handled that for us, and we saw that dialogue before, right? And way back 30 minutes or however long it was with, with the first option. But the SDK views don't handle that, and neither do the, the shared classes. And so because we didn't use any of the SDK fragments or activities, we needed to actually add that code in ourselves. Um, but that's OK. I mean, it's not too bad. We just implement an interface with a single callback, that on invalid certificate. Call one of two functions with Jabber Guest Call based on conditions, accept or reject. Maybe I throw up a dialogue with an OK cancel. And if they say OK, I'll call accept. If they say cancel, I'll call reject. That's fine. We'll remember the choice for that certificate as long as the, the app is installed. So that you're not constantly asked about that same certificate over and over and over again. Um, be careful if you are using components like the fragments or activities that already have their own invalid certificate handler. If you try to put in your own, 
There could be a, a timing sequence issue where Jabber guest call is only going to care about the last registered invalid certificate handler. So if you try to register yours and then the fragments register theirs after yours, yours isn't going to be used. It's going to be the, the fragments themselves that are used. At last. So Jabber Guest for Android uses H.264 AVC video, which requires a license agreement. Now, Cisco already has that. All you got to do is click an accept button on the dialog, and you're free to use it from that point forward, one time. Any components that use that functionality will not start until you accept this license one time. So preview view and self view, because it's video, that, that makes sense. We've got to accept the license before the video using components will actually start to function. Um, and containing SDK components, so maybe you think, oh, I'll just use the fragments, that I'll get around it. No, the fragments contain those views too. So you must provide an activity context to Jabber Guest Call instance prior to calling start or set self texture view. So you can't actually start a call to get this to work. There is an alternative. We do have a way in code you can implicitly accept the license, but and this, is, this is where I get to use all three buttons on the text modifiers. If there, was, if there was more, I'd use them. Only do this if you have your own license agreement with MPEG LA in place. When you do this, you are accepting all royalties and all responsibilities therein. It's pretty easy for the user to just click that activate on that dialog that we provide them, though. I mean, I would just go that route. Um, once activation is completed, that user will never see that dialog again. And we, we showed logging. Uh, by default, we only log at the WARN level. They, that can be manually changed. Three different uh, component areas in the SDK where you can control the logging, being at the high level SDK, the uh, native level libraries, or even the video engine. But be careful. So I put to debug because I like to live life a little dangerously. I'm an engineer. I don't care that stuff is streaming really fast. but. Holy cow, there's a lot of stuff that gets logged, especially at the debug level. So be ready. If you, if you turn the volume up, you're going to get a whole lot of information. So the, the fourth and final option, which I don't have time to cover in code, would be now I'm going to get rid of self view and remote view. I use those from the SDK. I'm going to use my own custom views. Or I'm not going to use a custom view. I'm just going to use an Android texture view. And I'm going to say, these, this is the surface where I want local video, and this is the surface where I want remote video. We'll do that too. You just have a couple of extra calls that you got to do before you actually start the, sorry, a couple extra code calls with Jabber Guest Call that you have to do before you start your video call. Boy, it is word stuff. Set self texture view where you pass in a texture view surface for local video. Set remote texture view, where you pass in a texture view for where you want us to send the remote video during the call. Um, another shared component, render callbacks, where we will tell you and your view when interesting events happen. For instance, I'm now sending you the first frame of video so that you can transition from just a generic avatar image to actually showing the video instead of a blank screen when frames are dropped, when frames are resumed, whenever a frame has changed size so that maybe you want to contain it and resize it accordingly. So in summary, four ways to use the Jabber Guest for Android SDK. The activity which I showed you, the custom activity with SDK fragments, which I didn't show you but is in the, the sample code. The custom activity with SDK views, which we went over as, as the, the code example. And then option four, which we just talked about, extending option three to have no SDK views, fragments, or activities where I just register my own surfaces there. Um, which approach you take for your app really depends on how much flexibility you want for all of the, the layout and all of the look and feel of all of the elements. I mean, if, if you're OK with the layouts and everything in our SDK, go ahead and use one of the, the first two approaches, right? It's going to save you a lot of coding. It's going to save you a lot of energy. And it's going to get you enabled in that app a heck of a lot quicker. If you want more control, then you're going to have to go with one of these two approaches. But you've got more code to write. 
So resources. Uh, a lot of our documentation is already up on the DevNet site, and we'll be updating that with every release, obviously. So there are those links. Who here is not a part of the Customer Connection Program? I hope no hands is correct. Let's say you're just shy and you're not wanting to raise your hand. Well, go to the connection, uh, Customer Connection Program kiosk in the collaboration area and sign up because what that's going to allow you to do is join our EAP program, Early Adopter Program, so that you can get all of our betas and then participate and give us feedback as we're actually developing this stuff. And let's be honest, that, 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 that's a lot of stuff. Like walking to a booth and getting free swag for doing so, it, it, it's easier. Just, just do it. Um, and the other advantage is that you get to participate in a forum and a community to interact with engineers like me as we're developing this stuff so that we can work through whatever issues that, that you're going through and yeah. So it was lunch hour and yet you all still stayed through so thank you for doing so and uh, yep, that's it. <laughs>